بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد So we're just cutting on from where we left off last week and we're on uh, point nine discussing um, worship today inshallah which we did last week as well but going into more detail so inshallah today we'll be going through the meaning of Ar-Rab and Al-Ma'bud and there'll be some more details as well but the main theme today is that and the types of worship as well inshallah so uh, the meaning of Ar-Rab is the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course and um Wasim, do you want to say something? You put your hands up. Okay, no worries, sorry. Um, so, uh, Arab, we're going to go through Arab and we're going to discuss Al Ma'bud. And uh, I think I've not shared the screen, so give me a second. I think that's why Wasim's put his hands up. One second. Sorry about that. Uh, you should be able to see the screen now, inshallah. Yeah, Barakallah Fikum. Right, uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't share the screen. Uh, you should be able to see the screen now. So we'll be going through uh, a rub point nine here, and then we'll, we'll go through the rest of the book, the pages, inshallah. Barakallah uh, fikum. So uh, I'll read the Arabic, inshallah, and then we'll, uh, uh, we will translate it. Ta'ala. So then the Shaykh, he says, Qawluhu wa rabbu huwa al-ma'bud. Ay, huwa alladhi yastahiqu libada, wa amma ghayrahu fala yastahiqu libada. لأنه ليس ربا هذا وجه كلام الشيخ رحمه الله بقوله الرب هو المعبود أي هو الذي يستحق ربادة ثم أيضا لا يكفي أن الإنسان يقر بالربوبية بل لا بد أن يقر بالعبودية لله سبحانه وتعالى ويفعلها مخلصا له سبحانه وتعالى فما دام, فما دام أقر أنه الرب فإنه يلزمه أن يقرأ أنه أن يقر أنه هو المعبود وأن غيره لا يستحق شيئا من الإبادة ودليل على أن الإبادة خاصة بالرب قوله تعالى يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا وسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون So the, the Sheikh says in this paragraph here he starts off and he says الرب هو المعبود So he says uh, uh, he says that the Lord and he is the one who's worshipped and then the Sheikh explains what does that mean he says i.e. that it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of everything that exists, is the one who is deserved of all worship. As for other than him, for then any anything other than him is not deserved of worship. Because it is not a Lord. It is not a Rabb, a Lord. And the Sheikh says this is uh, the point that's being made by uh, the original author. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, this is the point he's making in terms of when it comes to worship that that when when we say that Allah is Lord and we associate Lordship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say that Allah is the Lord of everything, then it's not sufficient just to say that. Rather, we have to say that He is He is the Lord of everything and He is deserved of worship. Only He is deserved of worship, they go together. And in Arabic they say that's uh Ar Rububiya and Al Hulu Al Uluhiya. Yeah, um, and Ubudiyah. So then the Sheikh he, he mentions these things and he says, as is mentioned before in the previous weeks as well, in, in this series of lessons, that uh, that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone 
right? Uh, or, or sincerely not sharing any, uh, not sharing your worship with any anybody else, and all of your worship is directed to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Lord of the Worlds, the one who's deserved of all worship. This is what's being said here in summary. And then the Sheikh uh, quoted an ayah uh, which we read. So why don't we uh, go through the translation of that? And the translation of that is, O mankind, worship your Lord Allah who created you and those who were before you so that you may become al-muttaqun, the pious, who has made the earth a resting place for you and the sky as a canopy and sent down water, rain from the sky and brought forth therewith fruit as a provision for you. Then do not set up rivals unto Allah in worship while you know that he alone has a right to be worshipped. So there's Allah has clarified to us and very clear what's being said there and uh, also perfect evidence uh, brought by the Shaykh as well so, uh, Shaykh uh, Rahmullah the, the original author as explained by Shaykh Sadr al-Fawzan Hafidullah so let's continue so then now the Shaykh like we did last week the Shaykh is going to uh, break down and give us a tafsir of, of the ayah that we just read the two ayahs that we read from Surah Al-Baqarah verse 20 and 21 uh, so uh, it's going to be the same kind of uh, uh, layout of the last lesson. So it's a breakdown, inshallah, uh, and uh, expand on, on on the two ayahs we've read. So he says, "Ya ayyuhun nas, hada nida'u min Allah li jami'i nasi al mu'minin wal kufar." Then Allah dhakra fi hadi surat surat al Baqarah in qisam al nas ila thalatha yaqsam. So then the ayah begins with, "Ya ayyuhun nas, O oh people." O oh, people, and the Sheikh says, what does that mean? And he says, it is a call, Allah's calling to all of the people, whether they are believers or disbelievers, whether they are the, from the Mu'minun or whether they are from the Kufar, everybody. And then the Sheikh says, because Allah is mentioned uh, in the Surah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, like this, and is in Surah Al-Baqarah, from the benefits that are taken from Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah mentions three types of people in this Surah. And the Shaykh is going to go on to explain, inshallah, that to us. Uh, inshallah. So, um, let's carry on. So the Shaykh, he says, Al-Qism Al-Awwal. Al-Qism Al-Awwal, so there's three, there's three categories. Let's go one by one through these. He says, Al-Qism Al-Awwal, Al-Mu'minun Al-Ladina Yu'minun Bil-Ghayb Wa Yu'minun Bil-Yawm Al-Akhir Wa Wasafahum Bi-Annahum Humul Muflihun Fi Qawlihi Ula'ika Ala Hudam Min Rabbihim Wa Ula'ika Humul Muflihun Surah Al-Baqarah verse 5. So then the first type of people, the Shaykh says, the first type, the first category are the believers who believe in the unseen and they believe in the last day, uh, and they were described as those who are successful in the speech of Allah, as we know, right at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. And if we go there and look at the translation as well, uh, this is v verse 5, look at the translation of that. They are on true guidance from their Lord, and they are the successful. So that's the first type. Then we have the second type, type or the second category of people that are mentioned in Surah Surah Al-Baqarah and so the Shaykh says Al-Qismu Thani Al-Qismu Thani Al-Kufar Al-Ladheena Adharu Al-Kufr Wal-Inad Qala Ta'ala Inna Al-Ladheena Kafaru Sawa'un Alayhim A'anthartahum Am Lam Tundirhum La Yu'minun so then the Shaykh says the second type, the second category of people, the disbelievers, the kuffar, the disbelievers who uh, displayed their disbelief. It was apparent, their disbelief was apparent uh, and um, their rejection is apparent as well and their stubbornness to accepting the truth and their rejection of uh, of Allah's speech and the deen of Islam. Then uh, they've obviously, it's clear, we know that this person is kuffar. He says he's a disbeliever, he doesn't believe in Islam. And he doesn't say, I believe in Islam. So then there's an ayah from uh, the same surah, the ayah after the one we just read. And the translation of that is, Verily those who disbelieve, it is the same to them, whether you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. So that's the second type of person. 
Then we move on to the third type. So the Shaykh he says, Al Qismu Thalith, Al Munafiqun Al Ladina, Laysu Ma Al Kufari, Wa Laysu Ma Al Mu'minin, Mudabdabina, Baina Dalika, La Ilaha, Ula, Iwala, Ilaha, Ula. Fahum, Mu'minuna, Fidahir, Lakina, Hum Kufar, Filbatin. وهؤلاء شر من الكفار المجاهرين بكفرهم ولهذا أنزل فيهم أنزل فيهم بذ يشرة آية بينما أنزل في المؤمن أنزل في المؤمنين آيات قليلة وفي الكفار آيتين أما المنافقون فبدأ ذكر ذكرهم من قوله فبدأ ذكرهم من قوله ومن الناس من يقول آمنا إلى قوله يكاد البرق يختف أبصارهم We'll just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh, he says, the third type of person, and, those, and they are the hypocrites, who are not with the disbelievers, and nor are they with the believers. Then the Sheikh quotes an ayah, which is verse... 143 from from Surah An-Nisa. Let's read that. They are swaying between this and that, belonging to these, not to those. And he whom Allah sends astray, you will not find for him a way to the truth Islam. So they're not with the Muslims and they're not with the disbelievers. <laughs> So let's carry on. So then the Sheikh he says, he says, and the Sheikh says that the Munafiqun, that the hypocrites are worse, they are more evil than the disbelievers that who make their disbelief apparent. And and, and that's why, and the Sheikh says, and that's why uh the verses that were revealed regarding the Munafiqeen you know, around, you know, anywhere between 13 to 20 or so ayahs. Uh, as for uh, the believers, there are very few ayahs about them. Uh, and for and uh, in terms of the kuffar, there are only two ayahs. So in term, you can see that uh, there's more ayahs revealed about the munafiqun, the hypocrites. They are more evil than the, the disbelievers. So then the Sheikh says, as for the Munafiqun, he says, as for the hypocrites, they're, they're in Surah Al-Baqarah, um, their mentioning or, or the mentioning of them uh, starts from verse 8 in Surah Al-Baqarah. So you can have a look at that. We read the ayah from verse 8 and ends at verse 20, at the end of verse 20 in Surah Al-Baqarah as well. So let's just, uh, we'll, we'll go to the ayahs now. Uh, while we're here so verse 8 let's read verse 8 and of mankind there are some hypocrites who say we believe in Allah on the last day while in fact they believe not then if we go to verse 20 all the way but in between that I encourage you brothers to read what's in between verse 8 and 20 because that's all of them then uh, the verse 20 is the lightning almost snatches away their sight whenever it flashes for them they walk therein and walk, when darkness covers them they stand still and if Allah willed, he could have taken away their hearing and their sight. Certainly Allah has power over all things. So let's continue, inshallah, where we stop there. And then the Shaykh, he says, هَذَا كُلُّهُ فِي الْمُنَافِقِينَ لِشِدَّةِ خَتَرِهِمْ وَقُبْحِ فِعْلِهِمْ وَلَمَّا ذَكَرَ هَذِهِ الْأَصْنَافَ الثَّلَاثَ قَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ فهذا دعاء لجميع الأصناف المؤمنين والكفار والمنافقين قالوا لما أول نداء في المصحف هو, هو هذا يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم سورة البقرة uh, آية 21 So then the Sheikh says he says so all of this all of those ayahs are mentioned with regards to the munafiqeen why? because of the severity of that danger and you know uh, the ugly things and the very nasty things that they do out of their actions as well so when uh, it was mentioned so 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 therefore when it was mentioned these three types of people so the sheikh's recapping he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he said ya ayyuhun nas o people i mentioning these three types of people 
i.e. all of those three types, they encompass what? The believers, the disbelievers, and the hypocrites. And then he says that the, the Sheikh says the ulama, the scholars said that the first call in, in the Mus'haf, in the Quran, it is this. And he read the ayah, he says, Ya ayyuhan nasu umudu rabbakum. So, oh, oh people, worship your Lord. That's the first uh, call that's made in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, oh, he says, oh people, oh mankind, worship your Lord. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 21. So let's carry on. So now we move on to the next uh, uh, part of the explanation of the ayah. And the Shaykh uh, emphasizes the word U'budu, which is uh, worship is a command. So he says that this is a, this is a command, of, it's a command verb, uh, and it's commanding you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? And he says, because he's your Lord. Why worship him? Why? Because he's our Lord. So but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of everything. And worship is not correct except that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped. So it's not correct up until we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Then the Sheikh says that the original author then mentions the evidence for that or, or the evidence that goes there. It says, Allah di khalaqakum. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Worship me. So uh, worship me. You know, worship your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created you because he created us. Right? He's our creator. So then the Sheikh moves on. And he says, وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مِنَ الْأُمَّمِ كُلِّهِمْ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى وَتَعَالَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْجِنُّ وَالْإِنسِ وَجَمِيعِ الْمُخْلُقَاتِ So then we move on, on to the ayah further down, and where it says, وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And those who came before you, from, the Sheikh says, from like, for example, from the nations, all of them before you. Allah create Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. He created the angels, the jinn, mankind, and all of creation. He created it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we move on. The Shaykh quotes La Allakum Tatakun from, from, from the same ayah. La Allakum Tatakun. So he says, uh, uh, meaning that uh, Allah says La Allakum Tatakun that, uh, uh, that you may become uh, uh, Al Mutakun or Tatakun that you may fear him. Um, and be conscious of him. So then the Sheikh says, "Ida tadabbartum hada, falalla hada an yusabab lakum taqwa ida tadabbartum anna hu aladhi anna hu aladhi khalakum wa khalak aladhi na min qablikum lallakum tataqunu subhanahu wa taala fi ibadati, li anna hu la yqiya min adabihi illa taati subhanahu wa taala, lallakum tataqun adabi wa tataqun al nar." لأنه لا يقيكم منها إلا إبادة إلا إبادة ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم. So then the Sheikh he says he says what does that mean? Allah kum tatakun. He says if you pondered over this, then you know it, it would be a reason. If you ponder over it properly, it'd be the reason for you uh, to gain that piety and taqwa. Uh, why? Because if you ponder over this. You ponder over that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and created all those things before you that in the hope that you would ponder over that and realize and come to your senses that you know you should uh, uh, you know fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow his commands uh, whether those commands are for you to do something or whether they are those commands which are prohibitions for you to uh, uh, stay away from something subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, and that encompasses worship. So then the Sheikh says that without being God-fearing and following Allah's commands, you won't be free from, um, or you won't avoid the punishment. And you'll only avoid punishment by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And so then the Sheikh gives an example. like the Sheikh, Allah is saying, La Allahum tatakun. Why? That Allah is saying to us, you know, that you may become God-fearing, that you may, you know, uh, uh, follow my commands uh, and my prohibitions uh, so that you are able to stay away from my punishment and ultimately in the end the fire hellfire 
And the only way we can, you know, gain the salvation is by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only way. By worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only. So then the Shaykh, he continues, he says, he says, ثُمَّ أَوَاسَ الْإِسْتِدْلَالَ لَا رُبُوبِيَةِ وَبُوْدِيَةِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى بِقَوْلِهِ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشَ أي بساطة وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ بساطة And then he says, مبسوطة وفراشا أي تفترشونه تتنام تنامون عليها تبنون عليها تزرعون على ظهورها تسيرون عليها في سفركم أينما تريدون فالأرض فراش ومهاد والأرض فراش فرشناها فنعم الماهدون. So then the sheikh he mentions the sheikh mentions here he says then we we arrive to the evidences uh, with regards to Allah's lordship and and and, and the evidence of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala, um, and then by Allah's speech, Jalla la kumul arda firasha that that He made for us uh, the earth a uh, firasha, you know, a place where the Sheikh says here he says, for example, made it flat and open and and wide and spacious, in order that we can, um, for example, we sleep upon it. You know, we can build upon it. We can uh, ha um, harvest and you know uh, farm upon it. For example, crops and etc. Uh, uh, and uh, travel upon it. And other than that, uh, from, uh, from from the benefits for uh, the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that Allah has given these benefits for us for our benefit. He's created all this. Um, and then the Sheikh uh, mentions uh, an ayah as well here. Which I will go to Surah Al Dariyat. Give me a second, brothers. I'll just pull that up. It was Surah Al Dariyat, verse 45, 48. Sorry. Let me just go there quickly. And then, yeah, so, وَالْأَرْضَ فَرَشْنَاهَا فَنِعْمَ الْمَاهِدُونَ And we have spread out the earth, how excellent spread there are we. Yeah, there of are we. So, uh, just um, an evidence for what the Sheikh has mentioned. And just this bit that I missed here, at the top, the title is, أَنْوَعُ الْإِبَادَ الَّتِ يَمْرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا وَأَدِلَةُ كُلِّ نُوْ So, now we're moving on to the next topic here, uh, within this book, Usul uh, al and that is to do with the types of worship. Right? So, the types of worship. Uh, that we have been commanded with, and the Sheikh is going to go through every type and explain it to us, inshallah. But we'll just finish off the tafsir here. Because uh, in the book, it, it, it's entitled, it's, the title starts, but there's still parts of the last uh, chapter within the beginning over here when he's entering a new chapter. So uh, then the Sheikh says, Wasama bina. So the Sheikh says, Fasama. سقف الأرض وفيها مصالح للإباد وأنزل من السماء ماء فخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله يندادا وأنتم تعلمون from the ayah that we read at the start of this lesson so then the sheikh mentions at the sama the skies the sky uh, is like a canopy it covers yeah from the top and the sheikh says it's like the ceiling it's a ceiling uh, you know it's a ceiling of 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 the of the earth right and he says, and in it are benefits for the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and then he quotes the ayah that we read earlier on. Uh, you know, that we are, and the way Allah says that, uh, you know, uh, what comes down from the skies is rain. And because of the rain, when it drops and it, it basically enriches the ground, uh, fruits come and vegetables grow, you know, provisions grow from it, right? Because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, so don't, um, don't create rivals with me or besides me don't create rivals besides me and, and you know and that you know and from the translation that we read uh, earlier on uh, Alhamdulillah of this ayah so then the Shaykh continues so we move on to point 10 and the Shaykh he says لَمَّا بَيْنَ الشَّيْخَ أَنَّ الرَّبَّ هُوَ الْمَعْبُودُ وَاسْتَدِلَّ بِقَوْلِ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عُبُودُ وَرَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَأَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ 
استشهد بكلام ابن كثير او استشهد بكلام ابن كثير رحمه الله في تفسيره للايه واراد ان يبين انواع العباده وادله كل نوع فالعباده في اللغه معناها التذلل التذلل والخضوع ومنه طريق ومنه طريق معبد او معبد يعني مذلل مخدع مخدع بال or Mukhda bil Mashi Alay. So then now we move on to, uh, to the three types of uh, uh, worship, or the types of worship, sorry, the types of worship uh, in this chapter. And the Sheikh says, he says, so when uh, the Sheikh, he uh, mentioned uh, a Rabb, the Lord, that he, that is uh, deserved of all worship, he gave evidence for that. By the speech, by using the speech of Allah, where He said, "The ayah that we read, Ya ayyuha nas wa mudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhi na min qablikum la lakum tatakun," which we we've gone through, and also He 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 brought a testification or um, what um, Ibn Kathir, uh, rahimahullah, mentioned in his tafsir regarding this ayah, and so he, he, what He desired from that was that He would clarify the types of uh, uh, the types of worship. And it's evident and, and give evidences for every single type. So he says that worship in the language, so we're going to start like this. We're going to, so, so he's going to explain the linguistic meaning and then what it actually means uh, in, uh, 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 from the point of view um, of uh, the deen and the shari meaning. Yeah. So uh, he says, uh, uh, so in the uh, language, it is to lower yourself. To humiliate, you know, to 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 humble yourself and to lower yourself. That's what it means. From that point of view, so that you you know that you are humble and you lower yourself. That's generally what it means in the in the language, yeah, Arabic language. So then he says, and ibada. He says, well, ibada kisman. He says, and worship is of two types. So he says, the first type. He says, al kismul awwal. إبادة عامة لجميع إبادة إبادة عامة لجميع الخلق كلهم إباد الله المؤمن والك المؤمن والكافر والفاسق والمنافق كلهم إبا كلهم إباد الله بمعنى أنهم تحت تصرفه وقهره وأنهم تجب عليهم إبا إبادته سبحانه وتعالى هذه إبادة عامة لجميع الخلق مؤمنهم وكافرهم كلهم يقال لهم عباد الله بمعنى أنهم مخلوقون له مذللون لا لا يخرج أحد منهم عن قبضته وسلطانه كما قال تعالى إن كل من في السماوات والأرض إلا آت الرحمن عبدا سورة مريم فاس 93 هذا يشمل كل من في السماوات والأرض المؤمن والكافر كلهم يأتون يوم القيامة منقادين لله سبحانه وتعالى ليس لأحد منهم شركة مع الله سبحانه وتعالى في ملكه So then the Sheikh he says that ibadah worship is of two types and what is that? He says, he says the first type it is a general worship that that's that covers that is all that covers all of the creation that is linked to all of the creation he says all of them are the servants of allah whether that is uh, that is um uh, uh, a believer or a disbeliever or a sinner um or you know a, a, a hypocrite for example all of them are the servants of slaves of allah meaning that they are under the will of Allah. Whatever Allah wills for them, that is going to be. Yeah, they're not in. They're not independent, right? And he says, and and that they are, you know, it's obligatory upon them that they worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the Sheikh says this is what is meant by the general, the general um, worship. That's for all of the creation, the the believers of them and the disbelievers of them. All of them, we said to them, or all of them, we say to them, Ibadullah, the slaves of Allah, the servants of Allah, meaning that all of them are created 
Yeah, they all created by Him, by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They Allah's creation. They are they they are lowered. They are humbled, and nobody is out of that category. Nobody can come out of that of them, and uh, and nobody can come out of the grasp and the authority of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Nobody can. They're under Allah's authority. And then the, the Shaykh says, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and now Surah Maryam, which we read, so why don't we go there? Surah Maryam, uh, verse 93. And if we go to verse 93, bi ta'ala, we'll see for ourselves, inshallah, the translation of, which is, there is none in the heavens and the earth but comes unto the most beneficent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a slave. Yeah, so there is none in the heavens and the earth but comes unto the most beneficent Allah as a slave. So that's what the Shaykh was saying. And then he goes on to say, he says, this encompasses all of that uh, which is in the heavens and in the earth. The believers and the disbelievers. All of them, they'll come on the day of resurrection, the, the, uh, the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah, submissive to Allah, in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There isn't for anybody a share in Allah, Allah's mulk, in what Allah owns. That nobody has a share in it. Nobody will have a share in it. And as uh, is mentioned in the Quran, mulku uh, kullu kullu lillah. Yeah. So, so then that explains that. So that's the first type. So then we move on to the second type, al qismathani al qismathani So the Sheikh says the second type. He says. أبودية خاصة بالمؤمنين كما قال وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا قال تعالى إن عبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان قال الشيطان إلا عبادك منهم المخلصين هذه أبودية هذه أبودية خاصة وهي أبودية الطاعة والتقرب إلى الله بالتوحيد Right, so then the Shaykh, he says the second type. So what's the second type of worship? He says that is the specific type of worship and it's for the it's for the believers only. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Furqan and also there's some evidence mentioned from Surah Al-Hajr, uh, uh, two ayahs from there which we will also read. He says, so let's go to Surah Al-Furqan, Al-Furqan verse 63. Let's read it. And the slaves of the most beneficent Allah are those who walk on the earth in humility and sedateness. So that's evidence for that. Then we go on to uh, the speech of Allah where he says, uh, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlazin. I'll say two ayahs, one ayah before the other one. So let's go there. Surah Al-Hijr. Surah Al-Hijr. We'll, read verse, we'll do it in the order where the Sheikh mentioned it. He says, certainly you shall have no authority over my slaves. Yeah. So certainly you shall not have no authority over my slaves. Then we go to, uh, so that's what Allah said. Then Allah is mentioning shaitan here, where the shaitan says, accept your chosen guided slaves among them. So, so you know that, that he won't, that the shaitan does not have any authority over the guided slaves, the mu'minun, the mu'minun. So this is specific to the Mu'minun, or the Sheikh's making the point there. And um, he says here, yeah, so therefore this uh, type of worship is specific, and it is the worship, it is uh, the worship that, that is to do with um, uh, uh, obeying obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, and following his commands and, pro- and staying away from those prohibitions and uh, gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the to- with Tawheed, as we mentioned many times throughout this book and some of the other books that we've done as well, as you brothers know. So um, let's carry on. So then the Shaykh he says, "Wal wal ibadatu wal ibadatu fi shari ikhtalaf al ulama fi tarifiha, yani ikhtalafat ibarat ikhtalafat ibaratuhum fi tarifiha wal ma'na wahid fa fa minhum." من يقول الإبادة غاية غاية الظل ما غاية الحب كما قال ابن ابن القيم في 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 النونية 
and deen of Allah, the law of Allah, Allah's law. So uh, the Shaykh, he says, he says that in terms of the, um, uh, he says that the, he says, So he says that the, the scholars, uh, they differed in how to define it. Uh, the scholars, they differed in how to define it. But the Shaykh says, he says, meaning that um, they differed in uh, the expressions to use. However, the Shaykh says, but the meaning is one. So even though they came with slightly different expressions um, or um, uh, definitions, however, all of those definitions, they come with one meaning. That's clear and apparent from what they've written. is one meaning. And he says, and from them, from some of the, so he mentions a, a few different scholars. He says, so some of the scholars, they said that uh, worship is, is, the, uh, is the limits of humbleness and the limits of love yeah or the purpose of uh, 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 humility and and the purpose or the point of love yeah having love uh, as uh, ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah one of the scholars he said in his uh, poem called the nuniya which he mentioned uh, the same thing here which we read the poetry so with the, with the same meaning so then the sheikh says so we know from there that uh, that uh, that the, for the purpose and the extent of love and and uh, humility that that's that that's one definition the other one he says and there are scholars who also said that worship it is what uh what Allah commanded uh um basically what Allah commanded and he says itirad غير itirad عرف urfi ولا اقتداي so what Allah commanded from other than what uh, what's related to culture and uh, your intellect? Then the Sheikh explains that to us. Actually, he says because worship is toki fear, and what that means toki fear is that that worship worshiping Allah or worship it's toki fear, meaning that whatever Allah said in the Quran or whatever the Prophet ﷺ said from his authentic Sunnah, that we stop there. Wherever the Quran stops, we stop with it and we follow it. And wherever the the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu the authentic of it, where the Prophet Sallallahu says something and we stop, we stop with it. We don't start using, we don't say, oh, well, our culture, for example, is that we do it like this and our families are doing it like this. And it's contradicting what 
the, uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa have said. So that's what Tawqifiyah means that we stop with the Quran and the Sunnah. Where the Quran says it, where the Sunnah says it, that's what we do. We don't say, oh, well, that's our culture. We need to do things like this. That's our culture, you know. And, and, and a lot of this cultural stuff can, uh, uh, especially when it contradicts uh, the Quran and the Sunnah, uh, you know. And also, likewise, using your brain, for example, using your intellect, using your brain on, you're thinking, oh, well, I think that, uh, this is better. And then you'll have somebody else saying, well, I think that this is better. And then you're, you're going to have a hundred million opinions of what uh, what what the meaning of worship is. And then you have a problem. So 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 the Sheikh explains it there clearly that we stop with the Quran and we stop with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah? In terms of that, what worship is. And then he mentions that the most uh, 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 complete uh, definition, the most complete definition is that of uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah where he said uh, that the meaning is, is that the worship is is a noun is is a over is an encompassing over is a is a gathering comp, uh, encompassing noun for everything that Allah loves whether that is um a speech actions that are apparent and that are hidden so all that which Allah loves from uh Speech and action, whether it is apparent or whether it is hidden, that's the over, that, that's the most complete meaning, yeah, um, an explanation of uh, yeah, ibadah worship. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, so he says this definition is a complete, all-encompassing definition. That that worship, it is, uh, it's a noun, it's it's a noun uh, that co- that is everything that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala loves, from actions, from speech. Whether it's apparent or whether it's hidden. Whether, you know, and also you, for example, uh, carrying out the commands of Allah and obeying Him. And also leaving off things which Allah has prohibited you from. All of this, it covers all that uh, 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 of uh, worship, yeah? All the types of worship as well. And it is it is not something that we can say, well, worship is um, X, Y, and Z. The Sheikh says that worship actually uh, you can't uh, constrict it so the overall meaning is uh, or ex- uh, the definition is that it's all that which allah loves right uh, from speech action whether speech uh, whether it's action whether it's apparent whether it's hidden like this of course in accordance with which what did the shaykh say before tawqifiyah in accordance with the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so uh, then let's continue so then the shaykh he says he says, "Takunu ala lisan mithlu tasbih." So, so, so we have. So he mentioned, and he said, whether it's uh, speech, whether it's action, or whether it's uh, you know what's apparent and what's hidden, and what's unseen, like, you know, and what's able to be seen. So he says, so from uh, from the examples uh, of some of the examples of worship upon the tongue are like uh, is like you know the adhkar that we say, for example, the tasbih, uh, or tahleel. Uh, for example, where he says, he says, for example, saying Subhanallah, saying La ilaha illallah, and saying the Shahadatain, you know, La, uh, la ilaha illallah, and saying, uh, you know, Ashadu an La ilaha illallah, wa Ashadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah. For example, uh, and he says, all of uh, the speech uh, or, you know, or the sayings, you know, on your tongue, what you say, that have come in the, uh, in the Quran and the Sunnah, of course, not anything uh, according to the Quran and Sunnah. So that's, on the tongue, for example, when you're speaking, when you're saying, that's a type of worship on your tongue. Then the Shaykh says, وَكَذَلِكَ كُلُّ مَا فِي الْقَلْبِ مِنَ التَّقَرُّ بِلَ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ فَإِنَّهُ يِبَادَةُ الْخَوْفِ وَالرَّجَاءُ وَالْخَشْيَةُ وَالرَّغْبَةُ وَالرَّهْبَةُ وَالتَّوَكُّلْ وَالْإِنَابَ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةُ كُلُّ هَذِي أَمَا الْقَلْبِ اللُّجُوءُ so then the Sheikh he says, unlike that, uh, all of that which is in the heart, for example, 
from getting closer, getting closer to Allah, from in terms of the worship of the heart, when the heart is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for, he says, for example, he gives us some examples. He says like uh, uh, some of those types of worship of the heart that are in the heart that are not seen. Are for example, a fear and hope and, uh, you know, uh, a desire, you know, and fear and things like this. And trust and, 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 uh, and uh, seeking aid like this. Uh, and there's other examples as well. So he gives a few examples there. He says all of these are the actions of the heart. Um, and, you know, uh, then obviously fleeing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your heart, you know, uh, you know, you know, he says, you know, taking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and having hope and, you know, and uh, wanting to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, having love for him subhanahu wa ta'ala, being sincere to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and having a truthful intention. Yeah. To, uh, for Allah having a truthful and honest intention right uh, for Allah Azawajal, or to Allah Azawajal. all of that for example he says uh, uh, is, is from the heart and, and he says from these uh, types of ibadah and he says and likewise uh, worship can be upon our limbs al jawari upon our limbs L like a uh, um, bowing down in prayer, going to ruku, prostrating in prayer, for example, uh, sujood, uh, al jihad fi sabilillah, you know, striving uh, in the path of Allah, jihad fi sabilillah, and striving, uh, uh, you know, against your soul or, your, or you're striving against yourself or with, by yourself as well, uh, making a hijra, emigrating to the lands of the Muslims. Or to, to place that's better for, for you in terms of your deen. So all of these are worships uh, that are worship that are related to your body. So we talked about the heart, didn't we? Now the Shaykh he mentioned about the body. And he says, for example, fasting is fasting is a worship of of, of your of, of, in terms of your body worshipping uh uh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you fast why? Because obviously you're not eating food or anything, you know, there's, you know, etc. And so he mentions that it's upon the limbs as an example, as another example for us. So then the Shaykh, he continues and he says, فَإِذَنْ فَإِذَنِ الْإِبَادَةِ تَكُونُ عَلَى اللِّسَانُ وَعَلَى الْقَلْبِ وَتَكُونُ عَلَى الْجَوَارِحِ ثُمَّ هَذِي الْإِبَادَةِ تَنْقَسِمُ إِلَى إِبَادَةٌ إِلَى إِلَى إِبَادَةٍ بَدَنِيَةٍ وَإِلَى إِبَادَةٍ مَالِيَةٍ so then the Shaykh he says, so therefore, as as he's mentioned, he's explained, he says, therefore, worship, it, it falls upon uh, either it, it is upon our limbs or it's upon our hearts. Yeah. And then he says that, so therefore, from there, from what we've learned, um, these uh, uh, these types of worship or this worship, it is categorized into or broken down into uh, uh, a worship of the uh, of the body, and uh, not exactly worship with the body, but in terms of the body worshiping, striving for worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and uh, uh, um, uh, striving in terms of putting effort in using your body. And the other one is to do with your mal, to do with your wealth. So striving and uh, worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, by by way of wealth as well. He'll explain this. So we're nearly towards the end of the lesson now. So he says, says Al Ibadatul Badaniya here thalathatul anwa alati. Uh, so the Shaykh he says so in terms of the worship that is associated to uh, the body then that is of three types which the Shaykh he said we already talked about he said for example to just to reiterate to us he says uh, for example uh, uh, the tongue on the tongue uh, you know the tongue and your limbs and your heart yeah so then the Shaykh he moves on and he says and, and worship can also be related to associated with well, what does he mean by that? He says, مثل إخراج الزكاة ومثل الإنفاق في سبيل الله وهو الإنفاق في الجهاد قال الله تعالى وجاهدوا في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم قدم الأموال على الأنفس فالجهاد بالمال إبادة مالية الحج يتكون 
الحج يتكون من إبادة بدنية وإبادة مالية فأداء المناسك التواف والسعي والسعي والرمي الجمار والوقوف بعرفة بعرفة والمبيت بمزدلفة إبادة بدنية أما الإنفاق فيه فهو إبادة مالية لأن الحج يحتاج إلى نفقة So then the Sheikh, he breaks down what he, what he means by uh, worship that's associated to um, wealth. He says, like uh, uh, when you uh, take out a portion of your wealth uh, for zakat, for paying the obligatory charity, right? Uh, he says, like the expenditure uh, when it comes to in the path of Allah, ex, uh, you know, ex, uh, um, spending in the path of Allah. Likewise, spending... Uh, in jihad for ج- in the purpose of jihad and then the shaykh says qala allah ta'ala wa jahadu fi sabilillahi wa bi, uh, bi amwalihim wa anfusihim surah at tawbah verse 20 so let's let's go then let's have a look inshallah uh, uh, surah at tawbah verse 20 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says those who we will we'll read the whole ayah those who believed in the oneness of allah islamic monotheism and emigrated and strove hard and fought in allah's cause with their wealth and their lives are far higher in degree with Allah. They are the successful. That's all I have. But with their, with their bodies, with them, with their selves, and with their wealth. So then the, the Sheikh he says he, he makes a point in the ayah that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he, he Allah said he says that uh, that wealth Allah mentions wealth first upon striving by your, yourself, striving upon yourself. He says striving with your wealth comes first. And the Sheikh says and jihad. Uh, uh, and, and jihad uh, by your wealth is 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 called ibadatun maliya. Is is a worship that's associated with wealth that you expend your your expenditure wealth. That sadaqa, you know, that's helping someone. You know, there's many examples. The obvious ones, zakat, and types of sadaqa that you can give. Yeah. So um, and there's many other examples, but the sheikh just uh, constricts it there because it's, we can understand this. Alhamdulillah. So uh, then the sheikh he says he gives an example. Or of Al Hajj, he says, Al Hajj, he says, Hajj, it consists of uh, both of those types of worship. He says, it consists of that which requires you to strive in terms of your body and also your wealth. How is that then? The Shaykh he tells us, he says, so for example, when you carry out your rites of Hajj, like for example, a tawaf, a sa'i, <laughs> excuse me, uh, throwing the stones. Uh, the Rami al Jamar, yeah, throwing the stones, yeah, a uh, Jamarat, and then also, for example, um, stopping by uh, uh, Arafah, yeah, staying on the Mount Ar- Arafah and the plains of Arafah, and uh, staying part of the night in Muzdalifa. These are related to uh, the worship that is to do with the uh, person striving, their body, they have to strive themselves, themselves, yeah. He says, as for the expenditure or the ibadah to maliyah from the mal, yeah, which is expenditure from wealth, then that is also in hajj. He says, for example, because it says hajj requires expenditure. Of course, you know, you need to have enough money uh, to uh, uh, to make hajj. Yeah, so, uh, so you can see uh, the great station of hajj, you know, the pilgrimage, that it, is, it covers all that, both types of Worship related to uh, bodily struggle and self struggle as well as with your wealth as well. Yeah. So um, then the Sheikh, let me just check this one second. Well, Sheikh Rahmullah, our other Amthalat al Ibada, Mim Babi Tamthil, Lamim Bab al Hassali, and Akthara Mim Madakra, Wala, Nukris the Abiha, Fi Risarat in Muktasara, Lakin Dakra Amthalu, Wali Sheikh, Al Islam, Risarat in Mustakilla, Isma al Ubudia, Tabhath, Filibada, Wanwa Libada. وبيان الانحرافات التي حصلت من الصوفية وغيرهم في الإبادة وهي رسالة قيمة يحتاج طالب العلم أن يقرأها Right, so then the Sheikh he says here, which this is the last paragraph I was just checking, so this is the last paragraph and we finish here so um, the Sheikh he says that he says a Sheikh رحمه الله أورد so he's talking about uh, 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 Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah here he says, uh, Sheikh Fawzan says about Sheikh Ibn, uh, Ibn uh, uh, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah that what he uh, wanted uh, from the mentioning of Ibadah here about worship, it, w- it was just, uh, it was from 
it was just to strike examples for us, give us different types of examples. And the Sheikh clarifies to us, he says it wasn't from the point of view that wherever he mentioned that's only Ibadah. No, there is more to it than that. And the Sheikh says that this is just to help us understand and give us a few examples to help us understand. Uh, which Alhamdulillah, uh, they're doing a good job, doing a brilliant job there, Alhamdulillah. So, so we understand that. So then the Sheikh, he says to us, he says he points us to, uh, he refers us to the book of Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah for the full details of worship. It's called al Ubudiyah. The worship or worship, yeah. So that's I don't know if it's in English, but it's called Al uh, Um, as you can see here, Al Ubudiyah by Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. It may well be in English, um, so it's worth getting that for brothers who don't know Arabic. Uh, if it's available, I'm not sure. But inshallah, maybe one of the books that either uh, myself will go go through it or a brother will see me, inshallah, if he chooses to go through it, inshallah, in the future. Insha'Allah. So then the Sheikh says that, you know, that uh, with this regards to this book, al it goes through all the types and types of worship and what worship actually means in, in full detail. And it also clarifies to us in this book that it also clarifies to us uh, the uh, the deviations uh, uh, that the people such as the Sufia, the Sufis and other than them uh, from the uh, uh, from these uh, sects and factions that have uh, strayed away from uh, the truth and the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, uh, that's explained in that book there so what we will do is we will stop there inshallah uh, and the next topic will be about al- uh, the meaning of al-islam wal-iman wal-ihsan and we'll go through that inshallah next week in our next lesson with Allah ta'ala around the same time barakallah fikum so inshallah we'll conclude there uh, سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وأستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته